Okay. Yay. Okay, here we go. Today we are doing solving equations by factoring. So we are doing nothing new, actually, today. We're doing all of the same stuff that we have been doing. We're just fusing together a couple of ideas. So let's first really quickly review what's called the zero product property. Zero product property. Okay. So you guys tell me, what is zero times 17? Zero. What is 17 times zero? Seven. What was that, Mr. Underhill? Seriously. Underhill needs help, you guys. Okay, 17 times zero is what? Zero. zero. Okay, so how many people would agree that regardless of where the zero is, if you multiply anything times zero, you get zero? Is that true? Yes? Yeah. Okay, that's what the zero product property is. You can have um, something where A times B equals zero. So if A times B equals zero, then... A could equal zero, right? Because zero times yeah. B would be zero, or B could equal zero, correct? Okay. And A, they A both could be, could. so I'll say and, or, A and, A, that's an and, or B equals zero, okay? So, okay, everybody zip it. Stop talking. Stop talking. Stop talking. So, that's what we're going to be using today, is the zero product property. All right, so here we go. We're going to solve some stuff. First thing we're going to solve is x squared plus 2x minus 8 equals zero. Oh. What's the matter? It's Wednesday. That's true. Underhill has this thing where... <laughs> Whatever day of the week it is, that's the excuse for Underhill's behavior. Underhill's doing his thing, and well, it's Monday, Mrs. Miller. <laughs> or it's a Thursday. It's Thursday, so that's why I am doing what I'm doing. It's Wednesday today. Thank you. I was confused. Okay. X squared plus 2x minus 8. How many people know how to factor that? We all better know how to factor that. We've been spending a bunch of time factoring. We have like two hands up in the audience. What if I draw something to help you all out? Ah. Now, how many people know how to factor that? Holy cow. Okay, what goes in the top? Eight. Bottom? Two. All right, so two numbers that multiply to negative eight and add up to positive two. Kendra, negative two and four. Okay, Shh. now what? Okay. I have a question, yep. actually. Why couldn't you just, never mind. I answered my own question. Okay. Akashni? Good. I'm going to go on a super tangent in a minute, but I want to finish the problem first. Okay, now what? Super tangent. Rachel. Would you? X plus four equals zero. Now you guys tell me, how can I, how can I use my knowledge of what we just talked about up here, that if a times b equals zero, then a could be zero, or b could be zero, or they both could, to solve X this? Zero. Okay, so we have x zero. minus two times x plus four equals zero. Still not x equals zero. Stacy. How about we try and get both of them? Because wouldn't you all agree that um, this, if this is A, then that could be equal to zero. You can't see that. Or if this is B, then that could be equal to zero. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to set that equal to zero and that. Lydia. All right, cool. Everybody give it up for everybody who helped on that problem. Everybody, yeah. All right. Questions? That's about the extent of what we're doing today. Any questions? Okay. Let's do another one. And then I'll go on my tangent. 
3x squared plus 14x minus 5. Let's do this. 3x squared plus 14x equals 5. 3x squared plus 14x equals 5. All right. Any ideas here? Michael. Cool. Everybody give it up for Michael. So whenever you have a square term or something that's nonlinear, you want to try and get everything to one side, zero to the other. That's the goal. So we get 3x squared plus 14x minus 5 equals zero. Then what? Ooh, I am going off the page there. Okay, good. So what goes in the top? Uh, is it negative 5 or negative 15? Why is it negative 15 instead of negative 5? The 3. 3 times negative 5. Bottom? Okay, two numbers that multiply to negative 15 that add up to positive 14. Stacy? Is it negative 15, positive 1? That's good. 15 and negative 1. All right, cool. Everybody give it up for everybody who just helped. Okay. Okay, A, Stacy. All right, now what? Now 3x, good. 3x, always bring that coefficient down because we want to reduce anything extra that we don't need there, okay? So anything that can be reduced? What? Jake? Um, 3x, 15, so it'd be x over 5. Good, x over 5. Everybody give it up for Jade. So x plus 5 times 3x minus 1 equals 0. So who can tell me what x could equal in this one? So the next step is we would set both of these equal to zero. Make sure you all can see that still. What's up? What's the matter? What's the other what? They got reduced. This one? So if you, three and 15, those are both divisible by, I almost put five. How about three? If you divide by three, then that goes away. All right, so in this one, what is x? When you move it to the other side, what does it come out to? Akashni. Cool, everybody give it up for Kashni. So I want you guys to get in the habit of doing these in your head. So to solve this, you add one to both sides and then divide by three, which means x is equal to what? One third. One third. So that's where you want to be heading is going very, very, very quickly if you can. Okay, how are we doing on questions? Okay, let's do two more. Let's see. My tangent. Oh, right. How many people know what rotary interact is? Okay, so we have some people. How many people are actually a member of rotary interact this year? Okay. So it's a club on campus where we do community service type things. How many people know that rotary is having a canned food drive? Okay, good. So how many people have participated in the canned food drive? Oh, that's nice. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to leave you all hanging. There's more to the story. I know you're all just dying to hear it. It wasn't that exciting. Okay, now, how do I factor this? 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. This one should be... Ah, good. In stereo. Nicely done. Okay, this is a perfect square trinomial. Akashni, how did you know that? Good, so 2x and 3 doubled is 12x. Okay, so how does, what is the perfect square trinomial? How does it factor? Kendra? Good, 2x minus 3. Give it up for Kendra. Okay, I mean, think about opposites of squaring is what? Op what is the opposite of squaring something? Radical, so square root. Exhibit. Okay, so again, I want you guys to get in your head to do this really fast, rearranging in your head. You're adding 3, dividing by 2, so you get x equals how much? If you add 3, three to both sides, two. then divide by 2. 3 over 2, good. All right, questions? Is this making sense? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> do you guys want to do any more of these? No. Um, um, I can't remember if there are word problems or not, but would you like to go through one of them? Let me put it up here and then you can decide. 
it will make a hasty decision. Everybody see what the problem is first. <laughs> it's one, okay, everybody zip it. Shh. 1 through 11 all, and then 21 through 25 all. Everybody, yeah, everybody get out the book and check. I'm going to write a problem up here. If we do, we just shouldn't have left. There are? Yes. That say find two numbers, yes. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Okay, let's do let's, one. Let's, let's not do those. Let's not do those. How do you really feel? Okay, the sum is 11, and the sum of whose squares is 85. We'll do one of these, and then we'll see what happens after that. Okay. Find the two numbers whose sum is 11 and the sum of whose squares is 85. Can somebody write a mathematical sentence? Let's start with the first part of it. Two numbers whose sum is 11. How would I write that? We don't know either number. We want to set up something here. Lydia? Uh, All right, good. Everybody give it up for Lydia. Okay. Then the sum of whose squares is 85. If our two numbers are A and B, Kendra. Good. Everybody give it up for Kendra. <laughs> also known as C squared. Yes, true. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. The way that we have to go about solving this, we're going to use substitution. So. Let's get A by itself in this top equation and see what ends up happening. If we do that, then we get A equals 11 minus B. Whoops, equals 11 minus B. Correct if I subtract B in the top equation? Yeah. Okay. If A equals 11 minus B, I'm going to take that A and plug it in for A up here, or the 11 minus B. Okay. 11 minus B squared plus B squared equals 85. So then... We want to go through and foil out what's on the left. So 11 minus b squared is the same thing as 11 minus b, 11 minus b. Oop, not squared. b squared equals 85. All right, so if I foil this out, I should get, this is how quickly you want to be able to do these. 121 minus 22b plus b squared. There's another b squared. 85. Okay. Okay, good. If we combine like terms, and let's put in descending order too. B squared plus B squared is how many B squareds? 2B squared minus 22B plus 121 equals 85. What was the goal before again? Oh, sorry. No, the goal in solving equations like this, we want to get what number on the right? Zero. How do I do that? <coughs> 2b squared minus 22b plus 36 equals 0. Okay, can anything be factored out before we do any other manipulation here? Akashni? Good, let's factor out a 2. Everybody give it up for Akashni. Okay, now if we use this method, what goes at the top? Bottom, two numbers that multiply to positive 18 add up to negative 11. Negative 9, negative 2. Then we distribute the b's, the b's. So we get 2 times b minus 9 times b minus 2 equals 0. Um, okay. What's the matter? Question. So B equals what or what? If I solve it with this one, B equals how much? Nine. And how about this? B could equal two as well. Now here's the deal. If we take this, we're, the two numbers that we set up in the beginning, the two numbers were A and B, not B and B. Okay? So A plus B equals 11, and we said that A equals 11 minus B. So A equals 11 minus 9 in this one, or A equals 11 minus 2 in this one. Yeah? Um, no, you can actually divide it out. 
so that it gets rid of it. So then you have b minus 9 times b minus 2 equals 0. But even if you did distribute it, you'd end up with the same thing. So your answer is 8 equals 11 minus 9 instead of just b equals 9? No, you have to, you get a and b. But you guys, if you look at this, you either have an a of 9 and a b of 2 or an a of 2 and a b of 9. So it doesn't really make a difference here which one you go with. The two numbers are 2 and 9. Yeah, okay. Shh. Okay, so you can either have a B of 9 and an A of 2, or a B of 2 and an A of 9. Either way, they're just saying find two numbers. The two numbers are 2 and 9. And you can verify that by plugging them both into both formulas. Okay? Questions? Yeah. Do we have to do 21 through 25? Yes. That is extra on top of B1 through 11. Yes, true. But, yes, there are problems that you do want to do. Page 217, written exercises, numbers, 1 to 11, all, 21 to 25, all. All right, go ahead and get going on that.